This is the NVIDIA Tesla K80. At first glance it might look normal, but let me tell you, this is a very special GPU. This enterprise level graphics card has two GK210 GPUs. These are basically souped up GTX 780 Ti GPUs based on the Kepler architecture. This card came out in November of 2014, that is two months after the Maxwell based 900 series GPUs launched. So why didn't they go with Maxwell based GPUs? Well it turned out that that architecture had some pretty significant problems and for their use case it was easier to just take a Kepler based GPU and upgrade that. Kepler is a pretty old architecture, but the specs of these GPUs is nothing to scoff at. With 2496 CUDA cores and 12 gigs of GDDR5 ECC VRAM each, this card packs a total of almost 5000 CUDA cores and 24 gigs of ECC VRAM. At its launch in November of 2014, buying a Tesla K80 would have set you back $5,000. Nowadays it's possible to get them on eBay for about 250 euro here in Germany. And I've heard in the US they can go for as little as $100 on eBay. But wait a minute, isn't there a significant shortage of GPUs right now? How is it possible that some GPUs are selling at three times their MSRP, but this card is just chilling at 250 bucks available? The answer is quite simple. The 300 watt TDP makes mining on this card a nightmare and it isn't good for gaming due to the fact that it doesn't have any video outputs on the back. It doesn't need a video output because it was designed for use in data centers and it doesn't have fans for the same reason, but more on that later. Well we can't do any gaming on it and we can't even hook up a monitor to it. What is it good for then? The answer is computing and stuff. Basically anything that benefits from good single or double precision performance and a lot of VRAM. For example, 3D rendering, photogrammetry or data science. I recently started learning Blender and I've had a ton of fun learning the basics and making some cool renders. But man, if you've ever tried 3D rendering with a ray traced engine, you will know that even the newest hardware can feel weak when you're rendering a complex scene. One great thing about Blender is it scales perfectly with multiple GPUs. In pretty much any case, having two GPUs of the same make and model will end up in exactly half the render times than just having one. Simply because instead of rendering one tile at a time, you can then render two tiles at a time. Because the Tesla K80 has two GPUs on this one card, it might be better than we expect even though it is 7 years old. I also decided to help it out a bit and I flashed an overclocked BIOS onto this card. The GK210 GPUs on here will now work at 1000 MHz instead of the usual 875 boost clock. And the memory now clocks at 1500 MHz instead of 1250. From what I can tell, the overclocked BIOS still stays well below the 150 Watt TDP per GPU when rendering in Blender, so flashing the overclocked BIOS just gave me a nice free performance boost without any bad surprises. Now it's finally time to put this weird enterprise level compute graphics card from 2014 to the test. How will it perform compared to modern GPUs in Blender Cycles rendering? Is the K80 actually a good value for a budget Blender workstation? We will be using a variety of the most common Blender benchmark scenes that you can simply download on blender.org and try out yourself. First off we have the BMW scene. This is a relatively quick render on most GPUs and is the least complex of our benchmark scenes. As a baseline I decided to include an RTX 2060 which completed the BMW scene in 1 minute and 25 seconds using CUDA. On the top end I included my AMD 6700 XT which completed the render in 55 seconds using OpenCL. I also included my 12 core 3900X which has a slight overclock and it comes in at 2 minutes and 16 seconds. Now finally the Tesla K80 comes in at 1 minute and 13 which is on par with an RTX 2070. Now if we look at performance using optics, the RTX 2060 beats the K80 by a long shot at only 39 seconds, but optics isn't everything. It still has some significant shortcomings and that's why I think it's more important to compare CUDA performance. By the way, for all of the RTX cards I have listed here, I pulled benchmark data from opendata.blender.org and calculated the average render time for each card and then I used that for this comparison. We will now take a look at some scenes that are a bit more complex and represent real projects a bit better. The famous classroom scene is our next test and the K80 comes in at a proud 4 minutes and 20 seconds where it fits right between the 2070 and the 2070 Super. I never realized how shockingly wide the gap between the 2070 and the 2070 Super is up until now. 
They share the same name, but the 2070 Super almost halves render times in many scenarios, performing very close to a 2080 in Blender. That the Tesla K80 beats the 2070 by almost a full minute is already insane, considering it is working with an architecture which is 9 years old by now and based on a 28 nanometer process. The introduction of the NVIDIA 30 series GPUs has meant an enormous increase in compute performance for NVIDIA's GPU lineup where even the 3060 beats a 2070 super easily. The 3060 would be a way better investment if we were looking at MSRP prices here, but we all know that due to the GPU shortage, MSRP means nothing at the moment. Price to performance wise, the Tesla K80 really shines because it significantly outperforms the 2070, which costs about 6 to 700 euro on eBay right now, whereas it's not difficult to find a Tesla K80 at 250 euro. As I said, the 3060 would be a way better investment at MSRP, but considering they are going for somewhere between 750 to 900 euro on eBay, the 6700 XT would be better at around the same price. The only card you could actually buy used for the same price as the Tesla K80 right now would be a GTX 1060, but it is so far behind the K80 in render times, it's not even funny. Moving on to the barbershop scene, we see that optics just doesn't cut it for every use case. This scene uses branched path tracing and optics just can't cope with it at all, resulting in a 30 minute render time on the 2060, over 11 minutes slower than when using CUDA. The 5 minute advantage over the RTX 2070 is significant and could potentially mean days less render time when rendering a long animation. Just out of curiosity, I also tested the performance under Linux and the performance is exactly identical. For these enterprise grade cards, Nvidia actually cares about the Linux drivers. Also, I tested it in the newest cycles X Alpha and as expected, there was a large performance gain in a more complex render, but an unexpected slowdown in the BMW scene. These results are really good, there's no question about it. And in a market like this, the price to performance on the K80 is through the roof. So should you buy one? Well, it depends. It really depends on the system that you're going to put it in. The first difficult task is cooling this card. It's designed to sit in a server with air constantly being pushed through it. This can be replicated with a radial fan like this one and a 3D printed shroud. The seller I bought my K80 from actually custom designed and printed this shroud for me and included it and the fan for free with the card. The problem is that this fan has a short bearing and it might have been damaged during shipping, I don't know, but the fan is unbelievably loud. Like seriously, it is not tolerable even at a locked 20% speed. If you find a quiet radial fan, it might be a good idea though. I just ended up zip tying a 92mm low profile Noctua fan to the heatsink and calling it a day. With the overclock on this card it isn't quite enough though, for normal blender use it stays cool enough but if you want to render constantly for several hours it goes close to 90 degrees celsius, which definitely is a bit toasty. It's easy enough to just have two of these fans next to each other and that should easily keep the card cool enough. The screw holes that are meant to keep on the plastic shell are perfectly spaced for zip tying a 92mm fan to it. Because DK80 has no video output, you need another graphics card to have a monitor output. This could be an integrated GPU on a CPU, this could also be just another graphics card that you have installed in a PCIe slot. Using an NVIDIA GTX or RTX card next to the K80 in the same system can be tricky, I've heard, because the game ready drivers try to pick up the Tesla card and ultimately Windows doesn't boot correctly. There is a workaround with modified drivers that I've read about but I haven't tried it myself so I wouldn't bank on that, but it is possible. In my system I have an AMD card as a primary GPU and I haven't had any problems. Another thing to keep in mind is the mainboard. To use this card it needs to support above 4G decoding. Most modern mainboards allow you to enable this option in the BIOS. Additionally, the Tesla K80 needs at least a PCIe 3.0 slot with 8x speed from what I've read. Many mainboards have a good slot for a primary GPU that is connected to the CPU and has PCIe 4.0 or 3.0 16x speeds but the second slot is often only 4x speeds and connected to the chipset. I've tried it in one of these slots and the K80 does not work well with 4 lanes of bandwidth. 
Having only 4 lanes available cuts the card's performance down by 50%. I now have it in a PCIe 4.08x slot and it works perfectly. The last thing you need to keep in mind is power. Make sure your power supply can handle the 300W TDP of this card. Also the card needs an 8-pin CPU connector for power, but you can buy an adapter that adapts to PCIe 8 pins to one CPU 8-pin. To conclude, is the NVIDIA Tesla K80 a good investment for Blender rendering? In my opinion, it actually is, but only in a market like this. If the market were a bit more normal, I would probably say no, but in the state it is at currently, this card has unparalleled price to performance. If you want to build a budget Blender workstation right now and you don't want to wait maybe another year, this might be your best option. Especially if you have a system that might have an integrated GPU with the CPU, you can use two slots possibly for two K80s and that would be a pretty crazy build for not that much money. Just make sure that you can keep those cards cool and have a motherboard that supports the correct PCIe configuration and above 4G decoding. And also make sure that you have a power supply that actually can handle that type of load. I've only tested this card and blender up until now, but I'm super interested in the different workloads that could perform well on this card. So maybe I'm gonna try and test this card in some machine learning or data science or photogrammetry benchmarks and see how it performs. If you know about any good benchmarks in these areas or you just have some thoughts on this video, then drop a comment below. That brings us to the end of this video. Thank you everybody for watching and see you in the next one. Bye bye.